still burning. It's very intense. Um, and we know that the firefighters have set up sort of a perimeter. They've drawn a line in certain neighborhoods, but they can't stop something like this. Ken has just given us information about burn victims. And now yeah. we're going to go to Sherry, who, who can expand on this information as well. Sherry? Well, Dana, Ken, we're across the street now from St. Francis Memorial Hospital, and a third ambulance has just pulled up. Two others arrived about 40 minutes ago, and the hospital has confirmed that it has at least two patients from that fire. We don't know anything about their conditions, though, uh, nothing about their age, where they're from, no details whatsoever. And the medical center is also expecting probably another two to three other patients, and all of them are probably going to have significant burns. That is the reason why we're even here, because St. Francis Memorial is one of the premier burn centers here for San Francisco. So how it was explained to me is that the patients are probably not coming directly from the scene. They're being taken to the hospital first, where their breathing is stabilized. And from there, because of the burns they have and they need the treatment, they're going to be transported here. Now, um, we have not had uh, any indication from the hospital, though, that it is going to be overwhelmed with patients right now. Now, again, it's not clear how many are going to be coming here, but there are surgeons on standby. Teams are ready to go to treat the patients here. We've been told that some of the patients who are already here um, at Memorial are being moved around just so that the new ones can come in. So again, we've just seen a third ambulance arrive, two others uh, here and dropping off patients about 40 minutes ago. Uh, we, I wish we could give you more on their conditions, but because of privacy concerns to the spokeswoman, just wasn't uh, going to tell us much more. But here she is, Abby Yant, with St. Francis Memorial Hospital. Uh, we've not received any indication that we will be overwhelmed at this point. We're very adequately staffed. We were able to move stabilized burn patients out of our burn unit to prepare to receive critical patients. Our burn surgeons are in the unit on standby. The whole team is ready to go. We have an excellent um, a team of nurses uh, that are all here ready to accept the patients. So again, uh, that was Abby Yant, a spokesperson for St. Francis Memorial Hospital right here in San Francisco, but it is the place for burn patients, Premier Burn Center, this certified burn center here for San Francisco. All right. So it turns out that at least three patients have been brought here, Ken and Dana, again, and we're just going to keep you posted when others arrive. Yeah, sure. This is Alan Martin. Okay, thanks very much. Three Alan, patients sorry. there. Stand by, because I'm going to get back to you. But okay. I do understand we, we have a spokesperson on the line with us now from PG&E. Is that correct? Are you with us? Yeah, Matt Nauman from pg &E. Hey, Matt, thank you for joining us. Now, what uh, what indeed can you tell us about what, what happened here tonight in San yeah. Bruno? First, obviously, our thoughts go out to everyone affected by this terrible situation. Uh, we do have uh, multiple crews at the scene working with emergency officials who are looking into the cause. It's unknown yet what the actual cause is. Do we, is it for, indeed, is this a pg and &E line? Um, at this time, it's unknown what the cause is. Our priority right now is to make the area safe. And as far as what's underneath uh, the neighborhood, can you tell us, it, was this, this is not an, an average type of line. This in, seemed to be a very high pressure gas line. Yeah, we are out there and working with officials to look into the cause. That's the, the information I can share. It is unknown what that cause is at this time. Um, we are also working with the Red Cross to set up uh, an emergency shelter for those who need it. Okay, and what about service? Yeah, I, I'm sure that a lot of people are affected within that vicinity. If they're not affected by the fire, they're affected by their service? Yeah, we are. Uh, obviously, customers, uh, both electric and, and gas, who are impacted in that area. I don't have a number at this time. Again, we're, we're on site, mm -hmm. obviously, with uh, working with the emergency officials to figure out the cause all right yeah as soon as we uh, as soon as you get the cause we'd we'd like to hear yeah, from we'll you so update i appreciate you. it matt thank you okay thanks very much go back downstairs uh, in the newsroom ken you got some new information yeah alan dana i want to show you guys some video that we've just uh, gotten into the newsroom here and this is pretty dramatic stuff uh, this was shot by uh, an independent videographer brian carmody uh it doesn't get any more uh graphic uh and destructive than that firefighters yeah it's time to leave it's just too hot when you have a house burning and it's that close, it's the temperature is the radiant heat is is so intense that you have to bail out. And you can see this is virtually the point of impact here. Uh, this is uh, you can see the the gas uh, explosion just consuming this home in a moment of 
just a, just a matter of minutes, this whole house. The windows blow out, the roof catches on fire, and just in a couple of minutes before your very eyes, an entire house goes up. This is, you know, just a minute or two, and this house is completely gutted. Um, the vehicle outside looks, you know, to be untouched, but the radiant heat there is so intense. This was a uh, video that just came in at the corner right there of Claremont and Vermont. This is, if you will, ground zero for this event. Uh, we believe, um, because of what the officials have told us, that a high-pressure natural gas line exploded right behind that home and completely engulfed it in flames. Um, I, I don't know how somebody would have gotten out of that house if there was somebody there at all, and we don't know if there was. But the right. fire spread from that point immediately to the house next door and to the immediate vicinity within minutes. Uh, this is just the first initial, you know, moments after that explosion. You can see how quickly that house is being consumed. It's just we, amazing. We can only we can only hope that the people in that home got out. Now I can tell you, Ken, earlier that that pink house to the right, I did see fire crews with a dog go through that house and uh, they came out nobody uh, with them so at least we know that house as you say later it went up in flames but that one was empty we can only hope that the uh, the one that's on fire there is too yeah it's just amazing video that's coming in again uh, this we just received into the newsroom you can see vehicles on fire on the street you can see uh, the black acrid smoke coming up as these homes just are consumed one after another. And what do you do if you're a firefighter? I mean, his hands are outstretched. Like, where, where do I go? Where do I start is really the question. I, uh, I would hazard a guess that, this, you know, this is the most intense event that most of these firefighters have ever seen in their lives. Absolutely. All right, Ken, thanks very much for new, in, new information and new video, of course. On the phone is Jay Allen. Homeland Security and Jay thanks for joining us and earlier we had seen some video with uh, the FBI w was there the Joint Terrorism Task Force what can you tell us it's happening from a, a federal standpoint here well I uh, d uh, d uh, slight uh, clarification I'm with state Homeland Security right. the California Emergency Management Agency handles emergency services and Homeland Security for the governor's office in the state so uh, obviously anytime there's any type of explosion one of the things law enforcement uh, immediately looks at is, you know, what is the cause? It appears at this point uh, from the information we've been receiving, and I'm sure you have as well, that it's a natural gas line, uh, some type of gas line explosion. So uh, the, the, the impetus towards law enforcement is more towards, you know, helping a, a response than an investigatory. Uh, but at this point, uh, we we are uh, trying to mobilize as a state keeping the uh, uh, an eye on the situation we are uh, in the business of mutual aid when the folks in san mateo county need more resources they come to us and it's our agency's response and job to get those resources there and we have worked closely with the local uh, officials with CAL FIRE to get uh, a couple of uh, helicopters, some air tankers, mm -hmm. some strike teams, some 10 to 15 engines uh, heading that way uh, from other parts of the Bay Area that are all part of our mutual aid response system. Mm -hmm. And do you think that'll be the extent of what you'll, you'll be able to offer from the State Homeland Security's office? Or will no, there be no, we, a need for more? We, we can offer more. Uh, we are authorized and we have a system that we can tap into the entire state. So if the need is there, we will ratchet it up from just a, uh, a local and uh, quasi-regional response to a more broad regional response. And if, uh, if, if more fire resources are needed, both us and CAL FIRE will be uh, will be there uh, bringing folks in from across the state. As a matter of curiosity on my part, and, and maybe for the viewers, since we did show them the video of the FBI, the terrorism strike team uh, member, what would be the purpose of, of their being on scene at this juncture? Well, any time, like I said, any time there is a type of explosion, and sometimes even uh, in wildfire situations, when you look into the investigatory process of trying to determine whether they are started uh, by nature or by man, uh, that is part of the process. Mm -hmm. uh, the same thing with this sort of thing. We have a major explosion. One of the things we would want to find out is if it was caused by some type of uh, 
nefarious incident. All right. uh, that is why it's it's there. Uh, once it's determined what it is, then the appropriate agencies, you know, uh, take over and respond from there. All right, Jay Allen with the State Homeland Security. Thank you very much for joining us, and uh, and your assistance is greatly appreciated with the strike teams and the Cal Fire uh, equipment as well. Thank you, Ken. Dana, we got uh, some more information on casualties here. Uh, Kaiser South San Francisco reporting 15 victims uh, have been um, seen in the emergency room. Some of those people will be transferred out. Um, two at San Francisco General confirmed in critical condition uh, burn victims. Seton Medical Center, which had that code triage in effect for the last uh, three hours or so, is now lifting that emergency disaster plan. They had three patients come in. Uh, one was transferred to St. Francis Memorial in San Francisco. They specialize in burns. The other two were treated in the emergency room, and they were released. So they have lifted the code triage emergency disaster plan, but they have not lifted the need for blood. The um, blood centers of the Pacific is still asking for uh, blood donations, and specifically they're looking for O negative. Uh, which is, is common. It can be, um, you know, exchanged with other uh, blood centers for uh, specific types that they need. They are not open right now, but they are asking. There is a need for blood, and they are saying that uh, they will be open tomorrow, and they will be open over the weekend for people wishing to donate blood, and they are going to need a lot of units to uh, help the victims of this fire. So they're asking people to donate. So they can, people can contact the bloodcenters.org via the internet, bloodcenters, one word, dot org, or call them in the morning at 888-393-GIVE. Exactly. And they provide blood for about 40 different uh, medical centers and hospitals around uh, the Bay Area and Northern California. So they have a pretty good handle on you know, what they need. They know what they're, what's going to get them through the night, but tomorrow morning right. their supplies are going to be depleted and they're going to need to replenish them. Right. So basically, you know, to, to add up the number of injuries, we're talking roughly 20 people at this point, 19 people. Yeah, we don't have completely all the numbers from all the different uh, hospitals that could be treating people. The three patients at St. Francis Memorial, we know that there are three patients there, are all okay. adults, two are critical one is in stable condition. That's the very latest on casualties. All right, so we have two critical um, at San Francisco General and two critical at St. Francis Memorial. Um, and then the 15 burn victims at Kaiser as well. Yeah, and those are real rough numbers right now. Okay. All right, Ken, thank you very much. Well, and as the evening goes on, those numbers may or, or may not rise, but however, the case goes, we know that those victims are going to need multiple surgeries and the need for blood is going to continue. So. It's, it's very important. Type O negative <clears throat> at this point, but any, any gift of blood that you can give would be important. Now, if you are in need of trying to find out information about a, a loved one who lives in this vicinity, um, there is a number that we can give you. It is an emergency number to be used as sparingly as possible. It is 650-616-7180, 650-616-7180. Now, the Red Cross has set up a uh, shelter in that vicinity. They've helped roughly 100 people that we know of. I'm sure that number has since increased since we first found out about that. The Veterans Rec Center at 251 City Parkway is also a shelter available. We were also given information from the San Bruno Senior Community Center as also uh, a place where you might be able to find uh, a loved one or you may be going for food and, and uh, water and shelter. Right. Dana, I have, I have a, one more bit of uh, information to, to, to pass out along those lines, and it's good news. Um, okay. Giants infielder Pablo Sandoval rents a house for his mom in that neighborhood. Okay? Mm. We confirmed that in San Bruno, right there. Pablo's mom is fine. She's been evacuated from the home, and she's okay tonight. So. Okay. That's a bit of good news. That is good news. We we would, yeah, any kind of good news we can give at this point is uh, I'm grateful for. As it's about 10 minutes after 9 o'clock, I uh, just want to recap briefly for those of you who might be uh, tuning in expecting to see regular CBS programming.